Hello everybody, welcome to a tips, tricks, and traps video for your Outlaws of Thunder Junction pre-release coming up. I just wanted to do a little bit of a video here talking about some things I think are good to keep in mind when you're building your sealed pool. Talk about some cards that I think are better than they might look. So a few that are maybe a little bit worse than they might look. Some traps that you want to avoid. If you want some extended thoughts, I've already done a full set review of every single card in the set, including all of the bonus sheets. I'll post a link to that in the description if you want to go find that. I'll post a link to that in the description if you want to go check that out. I also just come off playing the streamer early access events on Twitch where I got to do three or four drafts throughout the day. So I have had experience with some of these cards too that I want to share. So let's just jump in. All right, first things first, when I open my sealed pools, I always look at what fixing I have. And this set has, I think, some of the best fixing we've seen in a very long time. So there's this cycle of common dual land deserts that fill a lot of functions, right? Just they're tapped dual lands, which are just gonna be good, help you splash some good rares. They also are deserts and there's cards that are gonna care about that. They also damage your opponent for one point and that's gonna be a land that helps you commit a crime. And that's been very valuable. I found the kind of the quote unquote free committing a crime trigger playing these lands is very good. Feels really nice and you can line things up. Also, something to note when you play these lands, don't always play them on turn one, right? Sometimes you're gonna look at your hand, you have like two cards that commit a crime, you've got both your colors and you're, you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm just gonna play this tap land on turn four, trigger my two commit a crime things. I don't have a four drop in my hand, so it's not gonna disrupt my mana. So don't just auto slam that tap land on turn one. That's something I kind of had to break myself out of as I was playing yesterday. That's all the fixing we have though. There is a cycle of rare dual lands that are pretty good. There's also a few lands at common, like Conduit Pylons and Mirage Mesa that help you fix your mana or Bucolic Ranch if you happen to be playing a deck with a lot of mounts in it. Also, some artifact fixing. Oasis Gardener is not a bad one. These other ones here, Red Rock Sentinel, Bandit's Hall, Gold Pan. These are a little bit worse. I would really only play these if you had some really, really good cards to splash and you didn't have any other fixing. And I think in this set, that's going to be kind of rare. And that's just the colorless stuff, right? We've also got good green fixing. Hard Bristle Bandit. Dance of the Tumbleweeds, Patient Naturalist. I think the Bandit and the Naturalist are two really good green commons. The Dance of the Tumbleweeds, pretty solid one too. Either like, you know, you can ramp early or make a big thing later. But all three of these cards, I'm gonna be happy to open up my sealed pool so I can play more of my good cards. And then the hits don't stop coming. We've got some good green uncommons here. Some actually really good green uncommons. Outcaster Greenblade, three mana, one, two, that goes and gets a desert or a basic land from your deck and then just keeps betting, getting bigger if you have deserts in your deck. And this Spinewood Armadillo, really strong as well. Not only does it modal, because you can just discard it to go get a land, gain three life, but six mana, seven, seven, reach ward three, that's been really, really difficult to deal with. I played this card a lot yesterday and it came down and my opponents are just kind of like, huh, all right, you know, I have, my opponents took a long time on their turn, basically figuring out how am I going to deal with this thing. Also, really cool thing about the Armadillo, there's quite a bit of reanimation in this set, right? A lot of reanimation spells. So you can just discard this on turn two, reanimate it on turn five. If you're very lucky, you have actual factual reanimate, like single black mana, go reanimate something from a graveyard. So yeah, these two cards just add to the plethora of fixing in this set. And I know people like to hear color rankings and what colors are the best, what colors are the worst. Honestly, I haven't felt that any of the colors are like really bad. Like sometimes there's a color I'm like, I, you know, I play a few drafts and like, yeah, this, this color, it doesn't really offer you much. None of the commons are very good. I haven't found that really. I think I, I've been happy drafting all the colors so far. I will say though, I think green is really, really good in this set. Almost every single one of its rares is like an A-level rare. You know, I've just got a bunch of them on screen here. One of them I want to call out that's kind of baffling, honestly, is Colossal Rattleworm, that two green green 6-5. And you're like, all right, what's the downside? It has flash as long as you control a desert. Okay, that's not a downside. Also has trample. All right. And you can also exile it from your graveyard to go search your deck for a basic land or desert and put it onto the battlefield. More fixing, by the way. Card's absurd, but so is basically every card on the screen here. There's also a bunch of great green rares on the various bonus sheets on the set. We just talked about a few good green commons and a few good green and uncommons a second ago, and there's a lot more where those came from, basically. Like, those are, that is not the end of the good green commons and uncommons. I would just, you know, suggest going through the list uh, of the cards in the set and just going, yeah, that green common, is that a good one? You're probably gonna say yes for most of them. So yeah, basically, uh, I hope you open green cards. Not just because they're all very good, but because they'll help you play more of your other good cards of other colors. All right, now I wanna call out some cards that I think are a little bit better than they might look, and also a few cards that performed pretty well for me yesterday. First one here, Hollow Marauder. This is a seven mana, four two flyer that costs one less for each creature card in your graveyard. And there's ways to fill up your graveyard in the set, especially in black green, like, you know, black green, 
tends to do. So I think you're going to be able to cast this on turn five in a lot of your games, either through self mill or through just creatures trading off. And when it ETBs, your opponent discards a card. And if they don't discard something mana value four or greater, you draw a card. So just a really good effect. And you know, there's good recursion in this set too. So just doing it a few times, gonna make your opponent not so happy. Trash the town. Here's one that I think reads pretty well. But I played with this yesterday and it was just such a blowout in, in so many game states. So there's a spree card here and it's single green mana. So you can pay two more mana to put two counters on something. You can pay an additional one mana to give something trample. And you can pay another mana to have something gain the ability until on a turn target creature gains. When this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw two cards. So it's like a draw two plus I get my creature bigger plus you can give something trample. And the great thing is... These don't have to be the same creature. You can give these effects to a bunch of different creatures. So what often happened to me yesterday was like, okay, my unblocked creature, I'm going to give this the draw two thing. My one that got blocked, I'm going to put counters on it so it wins the combat. And my big creature that got chumped, well, I'm going to give that one trample. So really strong card. And also don't be afraid to just fire this off on turn four, right? If your opponent doesn't have much of a board or they go, okay, no blocks, they're tapped out. You go, all right, put two counters on my things, draw two cards. That's really good. Debuck Desperado. This is one that I was impressed with yesterday. Is a three mana two four mercenary. Then whenever you commit a crime, each opponent mills three cards. Only triggers once per turn, I think, thankfully. And uh, yeah, I think this card was pretty real. If you have a defensive deck, especially in sealed, when the games do go a little bit longer, and hopefully maybe you have a way to recur this, so if it dies, you can keep doing its thing. And three does add up turn after turn, right? It's also just a fine defensive body. So yeah, this is not a card that I would shy away from playing in a slower deck. Demonic Ruckus. So auras kind of range from being sometimes really, really good and sometimes not so good i think this one's on the really really good side of things so you can plot it for a single mana so just on turn one right and giving your creature plus one plus one menace trample and when that creature goes to the graveyard or when this goes to the graveyard i should say you draw a card it's a lot of things you get for your single mana i think often what's going to happen is you're just going to plot this on two go two drop slap this on it go to town with it the next turn if they answer it all right you got your part back no harm no foul you paid a mana and they had to use a removal spell and also probably didn't develop their board in their early turn i want to call out the the mercenary tokens i think every card that makes a mercenary token is pretty good not maybe of an exception or two but these mercenary tokens on the tap to give something plus one plus oh really impactful even just like one of them on the battlefield changes the texture of what happens in combat or what you can attack with and what counts as a safe blocker right i, I kind of had a few situations yesterday i'm like right, i got a nice four four on the board i feel nice and safe my opponent just had two mercenaries and just every single one of their creatures was just like all right send my two two as a four two you're gonna block it all right you trade with my two two sure but eventually they're just gonna start to really out attrition you right all their small stuff's gonna trade with your big stuff don't overlook these mercenaries I, I think that if they read well to you they are even a little bit better than that two rares on the crime committing bonus sheet i want to point out pest infestation so there's a vintage cube all-star kind of a strange card xx green green for a sorcery at rare destroy up to x target artifacts and or enchantments then you make twice x that's important twice x one one black and green pest tokens with when this creature dies you gain one life so there's a lot of things to take in about this card number one is just like what you're actually getting so you pay three mana to get two pests five mana to get four pests and that just obviously scales from there five mana to get four one one tokens that die and gain you a life that's just a good deal and you don't need to target something it says up to x target artifacts or enchantments so you can just cast this card whenever you'd like but there are a lot of artifacts and enchantments running around in this set so it's going to be a huge blowout a pretty large percentage of the time where you go kill your enchantment that had exiled my creature or your artifact creature or maybe both and i just get a bunch of tokens yeah this, this card is really strong and you know eminently splashable too overwhelming forces very powerful card but very expensive this is a six black black sorcery destroy all creatures target opponent controls draw a card for each creature destroyed this way i played with this one yesterday i had like a black green kind of grindy slow deck getting to eight mana was not that difficult i had some ways to ramp additional mana sources some of those green commons and uncommons that we looked at a few minutes ago but i don't think this is a set that eight mana is untenable at all i think you can definitely get there and if you see some other like really expensive cards in this set here and there at rare don't be too afraid to put those these like good really good eight and seven drops in your deck i think they're pretty castable and now to finish this off just to touch on a few trap cards and honestly there's not too many in this set i, I think for the most part if it looks good it is good and if it looks bad 
it is bad and there's not too many just objectively bad cards in the set with play boosters they really had to kind of trim the fat uh, of kind of some of uh, the, the weirder cards in the set that they sometimes include your mileage may vary of course you know everybody's gonna have different evaluations everybody's on a different uh, point in their magic the gathering journey as far as card evaluation goes but there are two cards that i want to point out that i have seen some hype on i've seen some questions about um, that I don't think are very good. So number one is Lava Spur Boots. Again, this is for limited pre-release. If you want to put this in your modern deck with Urza Saga, or you think it's going to be good in your commander deck, I, I have no qualms against that. Yes, the mana cost and the equip cost are pretty cheap, but you're spending a full card for really not that much of an effect. Plus one, okay. Haste, that's probably the most important thing. Ward one, okay, that's, that's kind of nice too, but it's just not a card that I would be excited to play, even like in, in a very aggressive deck maybe as a 23rd playable if you really really were scraping for playables and you're like i got the sickest aggro deck and i just need that you know one 23rd playable i think you're just gonna have better cards in your pool so you don't have to go to this one and then one card from the bonus list here anguish and making this is one black white for an instant and it's kind of funny they actually upshifted this to mythic <laughs> and it says exile target non-land permanent you lose three life. Now, this isn't a trap in the way that you should never play this card. It's a bad card, but it's also not a, a gigantic pull into black white. I don't really think you should splash this unless you just don't have any other removal at all. Three life's a lot. This is a card that sees, you know, a reasonable amount of playing commander. Some people are familiar with it, but unlimited three life is a lot. You know, we're taught as, uh, lim as magic players early on that, you know, life loss is not that bad and life gain, you know, it's not that good but it still matters. It does add up over the course of the game. So again, not a card I think you should never play or anything, but don't see it as like, oh, sick, awesome removal spell. There's a lot of good removal spells in this set that don't cost you three life. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. Once again, I will be posting the links to both my full set review in the description and my 17lands.com tier list. If you just want a quick little glance at like, oh, what does Alex think about this card? You can go check that out and happy pre-releasing. Thanks for watching.